Uh, first session of today, which is also the sixth uh, session of the Congress, and it's about foot and ankle trauma. Uh, before we uh, start, just uh, two announcements uh, from the desk in front. They said that people who have made arrangements with Avis for transfers, uh, uh, the transfer will leave from the conference center. And the 1630 uh, game drive still has uh, seats available. Before we start with the uh, foot and ankle uh, uh, session, we have a, a report back. Uh, by Dr. Cameron Anley, uh, who was our 2016 AB <coughs> ABC uh, Travelling Fellow. <coughs> um, just a few words of uh, introduction. Um, uh, Dr. Anley uh, graduated at Stellenbosch University, Department of Orthopedics, in 2012, and then he completed three fellowships. Uh, the first was a shoulder and elbow fellowship at uh, Rydisky Hospital in 2013 uh, so, and then a, a sports medicine fellowship uh, knee and shoulder at the Royal Orthopedic Hospital in Birmingham, United Kingdom and uh, the third fellowship was a reconstructive arthroscopy fellowship at the University of uh, British Columbia, Canada in 2015. Um, at present, he's uh, in private practice in Durbanville, and he has a special interest in upper limb surgery. Dr. Andy, we'd like to listen to your talk. Thank, thanks very much for the opportunity to give some feedback on the ABC Fellowship, which I undertook in June this year and a special thanks for the honour of being chosen to represent South Africa on this fellowship. It was a truly amazing experience. It was an opportunity to meet a lot of the people that had written the textbooks or the journals and uh, editors of the big books that you used to study with. So it was really an honour and I'd just like to thank the SOA for uh, the selection. So just as a way of introduction, in 1948 Harris organised this group of British surgeons to go across to Canada to start what became known as the ABC, or American British Canadian Fellowship. And uh, third, there along you, the, the most young looking guy is actually Charnley. He was on this first group that went across. It uh, became an annual event, <coughs> backwards and forwards. And uh, in 1983, South Africa joined. And two years later, Australia and New Zealand joined. It now alternates between one year where the, the US and Canadian fellows come this way, or we go to the the US and Canada, and just out of interest, they will be here next year, which only happens every four years now, because they either go England, South Africa, or England, New Zealand, Australia. And I'd just like to encourage everybody, when they're in your area, try and get to meet with them. It was great as a fellow to have a lot of interaction, and uh, they, they've got a lot to teach us, so it's quite a nice interaction. Uh, as we said, it was designed to encourage orthopaedic surgeons to share ideas of all aspects of orthopaedic surgery. It's not like a traditional fellowship where you go into theatre, but you had a lot of talks with uh, a lot of the different levels. And the three important areas which were constantly highlighted to us were their clinical care, research and training. And a lot of the units had variations of these, but they all included them with the ones that did it the best being the most successful units. This was our tour. We started down in Houston, worked our way up into Canada, backwards and forwards a few times before ending in Seattle. The group that went with me was a fantastic group. It's always a bit daunting. You're going to be thrown in with six other guys that you've never met, all with egos. But we got on really well after a couple of difficult questions in the beginning to cut some guys down to size. We got on very well in the end. And uh, I'm sure these are guys that will be seen in the future that will hopefully be leaders in the field. Um, they're working at all prestigious hospitals already, and uh, I'm sure we'll see a lot of their names are in the literature. So our first stop was at MD Anderson, which is our oncology unit in Houston. Uh, and uh, you can see it's a pretty impressive hospital city. The area of Houston that we were situated in is basically wall-to-wall, -wall, just hospitals. And uh, it's basically where the University of Texas the Baylor University and then MD Anderson, which is an oncology unit. And uh, it was a great start to the tour. We had interaction with all three units uh, in an academic day. And then uh, a very humble 
uh, Robert Sachin, on, on your right, uh, took us to the space station, and uh, he made us feel that uh, maybe we hadn't achieved much because not only was he a graduate from Harvard with an engineering degree, an orthopedic surgeon, but he'd also been an astronaut for many years, been up into space. And he gave us an all-access tour uh, through the space station, including, as you can see, into the uh, mission control. From there, we moved on to Campbell Clinic in Memphis, the home of Elvis. And uh, after a visit to Graceland, we had a good academic day with James Beattie and his department. Uh, he's the current editor of Campbell's. And it was enlightening. Uh, this is where we first heard about bundle payments and day case surgery and how they've used them to their benefit. It also made me feel that maybe my admin skills aren't so bad. On the right, you can see the uh, latest edition of the Campbell's that's coming out soon. And I felt a bit better to see that it was all in folders and not necessarily on the computer. At uh, Campbell Clinic, I gave a talk about tumours and how we, in, in the Royal Orthopaedic, we had assessed a lot of tumours that had been missed and, importantly, how we should be looking for these. And it was quite nice to get Terry Canale to say that's why he's always had the mantra, you should never inject a shoulder through a sweater, which made me realise that maybe I was on the right track. From there we moved up to... Sorry, this is not moving on. From there we moved up to Wash U in St Louis. Uh, this is rated the second best training programme in the United States at the moment. And I think it was evident when we spoke to the trainees that they've got a very good understanding of... Of a, of a family and work relationship. The trainees started, we started our morning at about six o'clock with, with the academics and we were there for the whole day. But they made sure that there was a good balance that was achieved. But there we were there for a weekend as well, so we got the real American experience with a bit of clay pigeon shooting. Uh, when we got to, to the clay pigeon shooting, uh, the guy opened his bag and he actually had an AK-47 in his bag and sort of all taken back. He said, oh, no, that's a, that was a present from his brother-in-law, which was a little bit beyond, especially the Australian and New Zealand guys almost fell off. And then we got a baseball game in as well, which was quite nice with three home runs, a hat-trick of home runs, which apparently doesn't happen very often. So after Wash U, we moved on to uh, University of Awa, and this was a real treat. This is what I think, this, made, this really hit home as to part of the fellowship. You, we had three legends in orthopedics, and uh, John Callahan, Stuart Weinstein, and Larry Marsh, all 30 years experience in their fields, giving us lectures about how they had got to where they were. And uh, we saw them almost at every session, whether it was in their research session that they did with us, in the academic session, and in the afternoon where we went and sat on a farm and had a few drinks, in the cornfields and chatting about orthopedics. And that was what really epitomized this, this fellowship for me, is that you've got these great legends that are prepared to sit down and chat to you about all different aspects of how they've got to, what they've done, and so on. So although there is a, a lot of play involved and a lot of academics involved, it's always with the underlying that it's, uh, you, you're meeting these guys and spending time with them. We then moved on to the Cleveland Clinic, which was a little bit more about bundle payments and how they're making them work and how they're achieving them. And this was also an opportunity for us to get into theatre with uh, some of the surgeons. And it again hit home that as South Africans, I think we were on par with the rest of the world. This is one of the pinnacles, the Cleveland Clinic. But I think we could stand up and say that proudly as South African surgeons that we're on par with these guys. We also got a lot of insight into how they are moving into Europe with their new hospital that they're opening up just next to Buckingham Palace in London and how they ventured into the East. It was a lot of financial talk at the Cleveland Clinic. From there, we moved on to the University of Chicago. And again, uh, I was hosted by, we were hosted by one of the last year's fellows who couldn't do enough for us. Uh, when he heard that we weren't playing much golf on this trip, he made sure that Friday afternoon was spent on the golf course. But it was an opportunity to chat to him again about how his trip had influenced him and how I should make sure that this trip changes my practice going forward. And some very good academics, again, they've got Rex, who's a, an archaeologist that's turned orthopedic surgeon that was giving us some insight into how his digs and how he finds stuff and how it's uh, tied in with today, including finding TB spine in, in Bolivian mummies. Also, while we were in Chicago, we were hosted by the Northwest University. Sorry. 
Uh, and uh, this is just an overview. We were taken up one of the buildings to look down over Chicago and look at Northwest from, from a height. And again, it was a, a very good academic interaction. Um, but it was interesting that within Chicago, you had two different universities, one a little bit more laid back, less worried about bundle payments, less worried about which patients they were treating and just treating the patient, and another that was making sure that the bundle payments, which is the current, current theme, was working for them. Our last stop was at the Mayo Clinic, which is one of the pinnacles for most orthopedic surgeons, I think, and this is us sitting with the Mayo brothers at the top and then uh, spending some time with Bernie Murray. And the Mayo Clinic, I think, was a good end to the American leg because it sort of brought home all the concepts that we had been talked about. They've got excellent, obviously, clinical care. Their research program is, is obviously second to none and their training is excellent. And what was interesting is, is that we had the opportunity with some breakfast meetings to sit down with Dan Berry, the previous head, and Bernard Murray, who was the head there for many, many years, and quiz them about how they had managed to get the Mayo Clinic to, the, to be where it is today. And I think it came down to those three factors, because they're all salaried at the Mayo Clinic, and how he dealt with the personal interactions to make sure that someone was doing the research, someone was making sure that they brought in the money by seeing the patients, and they were all responsible for training. After we left the, the Mayo Clinic, we went up to Calgary and uh, they took us into the Rockies to have a look at uh, some of the amazing lakes that are there. Uh, and again, they, they showed off their, their new research facilities. And so, so in, in Canada, they have a more NHS or NH, NIH type system where it's government run. But the, the University of Calgary has just developed an amazing uh, research and I think that is a real eye-opener for us. There's a lot of animal models that are being used and taking rats and taking out different aspects of the rat, cause, for, forming knockout rats so that they don't have certain genes, doing experiments, scoping their knees, doing all sorts of amazing things that you couldn't, really wouldn't think is possible, as well as having a unit that's literally got everything they need. They've got their own MRI scanner, own CT scanner, so whenever they do research projects, they're not relying on other resources. They can just get them done themselves. It was a lot more laid back uh, north of the border. From there, we uh, took a couple of flights and a long flight to get to Quebec City, where we attended the um, Canadian Orthopaedic Association meeting, and uh, we met up with the presidents from all the, the carousels, so all the presidents from all the associations, and it was nice to see some familiar faces and talk about things a little bit laid back, and it was also nice. It was a very high standard meeting. It was a, a good mix between instructional course lectures and, uh, and free papers of a very, very high quality, I thought. We had an amazing guest speaker who, again, it seemed to be the theme for our trip was an, an astronaut who uh, gave some insights on how things are moving forward and how space travel might change the way we treat patients. It was uh, really inspirational. And then personally, on a personal note, um, to meet Richard Hawkins or Bob Hawkins was quite nice. Uh, and, and chat to him as well. And he's a big fan of South Africa. From there, they took us all the way back to the west coast to Vancouver, which was a, quite nice for me, having done a fellowship there to meet up with the guys. But then also to visit something I didn't necessarily do when I was my fellowship, but to see the, the research they're doing there with the spinal surgery, and they've got a big input into that. And they certainly treated us in style when we arrived with our stretch limo. And from there, we headed just uh, south to Seattle, and uh, again, we met up with all the presidents, and this massive entourage arrived. And I thought, wow, they really are treating Rob Fraser with the respect he deserves, finally. And then we turned out it was actually Barack Obama that was staying in the hotel with us. But uh, it was quite an eye-opener to see the, uh, the amount of security that was around. Unfortunately, I missed him in the gym by about half an hour, but it was still quite interesting. What I found interesting about the meeting, it's not a sort of an academic meeting in the true sense of the word, it's a more... Uh, a leadership meeting, and these were some topics on the agenda, which I suppose are quite pertinent in South Africa. They spoke about what to do if someone comes into your clinic with a gun. Obviously in America that's quite a big topic, and they had all sorts of insights on how you must have your, your protocol sorted out. But what was interesting for me was when I spoke to one of the guys from down south in Texas, I said, well, what would your approach be? He said, well, I, I carry my gun anyway, so I just shoot back. Anyway. <laughs> And then they talked about the opioid epidemic, which, which uh, it sounds like it's not going to be left just in America, but might be heading in our direction, and how it's become a very big problem with patients, with simple procedures ending up on opioids for six weeks afterwards and becoming addicted. 
and then their struggles with getting orthopaedic surgeons to work in a rural setting and high quality orthopaedic surgeons in a rural setting, which I think is unfortunately something we might find here as well. So if I had to summarise, it's difficult to take five weeks and put it into one slide. But if, if you take home messages, and obviously I learnt a lot more than what's on this slide. But I think it was important that each unit had a different approach to providing clinical care, research and training. And the successful units had that balance well worked out. And you can imagine that if one person's left to make the money, there might be a bit of animosity if someone else is just doing research. But they seem to have worked out that balance well. In terms of bundle payments, which I know is a very topical coming here potentially, their bundle payments are slightly different. They left responsible for the first 90 days regardless. If a patient gets a DVT, it comes out of that budget. But what, we, what was emphasised just time and again is that the surgeon must play an important role in deciding the budget. Whether it's efficiency in theatre and therefore having sure that he has a say of which sisters he works with to make sure that things were done efficiently, his post-op regime, having sisters that were well trained so that they knew his regime so patients could get out, and making sure that they had a say in how much they were going to be compensated. Unfortunately, this might lead to a change in clinical management, maybe not always for the best. You know, day case surgery is definitely coming, and a lot of it was driven by these bundle payments, it seems. And uh, a lot of it about pre-operative management, making sure that patients were well educated, they had the joint coach that joined them with all their visits to make sure that they could be discharged. And then patients with comorbidities that maybe are going to be a higher risk of a readmission or, or might potentially get swept aside because now they're not included because they're too high a risk financially, but it might lead to them, them suffering. And some universities didn't worry too much about this, but others certainly did. And then the importance of getting that work and family balance, which was emphasised time and again. So I'd just like to say thank you to the South African Orthopaedic Exco for the opportunity, to the South African Orthopaedic Office for all the background and helping me get there, the AOA, and uh, my family as well for letting me undertake this. Thanks very much. Thank you.